everybody, Mr. Quick here. Today we're going to look at Eureka Math slash Engage New York Math. Module 4, Lesson 21, Writing and Evaluating Expressions, Looking at Addition and Multiplication. So, we're going to be using some charts. We're going to develop formulas involving multiplication and addition from some real-world kind of problems. And then we're going to evaluate these formulas. So basically, we're going to write them out. We're going to figure out what the um, expression should be. And then we're going to solve that expression. And evaluate the expression which means to solve. All right, so here's the situation. We've got a restaurant that has square tables that servers can push together to accommodate customers. So if you need more than one table, they'll push them together for you. Only one chair fits along the side of the square table. So I know I have a square table. One person can sit here, one can sit here, one can sit here, one can sit here. So four total. Make a model of each situation to determine how many seats will fit around various rectangular tables. So, essentially what they're saying is, if you need um, another table, they'll push two together. So then now you have a rectangle instead of a square. So let's take this one at a time. If you have one table, how many seats, the number of seats at the table over here, right? How many seats are at the table? We have one, two, three, four. Four seats. If we have two, that means we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Because if you look at it, um, you can't have someone sitting on these ends, right? Because the tables are pushed together. Now, right now, to get from one to four, I see plus three as a possibility, but then 2 plus 3 does not equal 6, so I know that can't be right. I know 1 times 4 would be 4, 2 times 4 would be, oh, 8, so that can't work. So what we're looking at here is actually we're going to need to use a combination of multiplication and addition, or addition and multiplication. Now, every time we add a table, let's do three tables, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we have 8 people here. Every time we add a table, essentially what we're doing is you notice that for every table, let me use a different color, for every table, you have two people who can sit at that table. Here's two. At this table, you have two people who can sit at this table. At this table, you have two people who can sit at this table. But, so it's basically the number of tables, we'll say T, times two, but you always have two people who can sit at the ends, right? If we added another table, you'd add one, you'd add two, but then you still have that person who can sit at the end. So, what we're looking at really is for every table t, for every table it's table times two plus the two on the end. So think about it. If we have three tables here, if we have three tables here, that's three times two, one, two, one, two, one, two, plus the two on the end. So, we know we can't write t times 2, that's confusing, but we can write 2t plus 2. So you see it's a combination of multiplication and addition. So let's check that. 1 times 2 plus 2, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And keep going down the line, right? 50 times 2 is 100, plus 2 is 102. 200 times 2 is 400, plus 2 would be 402. Now, we're in business. So let's answer some questions about this chart. Are there any other ways to think about, to think about solutions to the problem? So we kind of talked about that, basically saying it's times two, but then you have those two on the end that you can't forget about. Every time you add tables, you still have the two on the end. They just get farther apart, but they're still there. Is it, it is impractical to make a model of pushing 50 tables together. So when we did three tables like this, you can just draw that out if you just had to figure out how many people could sit at those three tables. That's not that hard. But 
if someone wanted 50 tables put together, it'd be really difficult to draw that and that's time consuming. So if we did have a rectangle that long, how many would fit? Well, we've already figured that out, right? 50 times two plus two would be 102. Make that a little bit better, zero. There we go. How many chairs fit on the ends of the long table? Well, just two chairs, right? One on each end. So two. How many chairs fit in all? Well, 102, right? We already solved that if we have the 50. It depends on how many tables there are, but if we're still talking about the 50, then you have 102. Okay, we solved the 200, right? 200 square tables, 200 times two is 400, plus two gives us 402. If we let t represent the number of square tables that make one long rectangle, what's that expression again then? Well, it's t is the number of tables times two, so two t, and then you have to add the two at the end. So this is our expression that would tell us how many people would fit at the table every single time. All right, let's do another similar example. All right. Okay, I'll read it here. Pizza Queen, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a Pizza Hut or whatever. Pizza Queen has a special offer on lunch pizzas, $4 each. That is a good deal. They charge $2 to deliver regardless of how many pizzas are ordered. So you could order one pizza, you could order 100 pizzas. They're going to charge you $2 to deliver no matter what. Determine the cost for various numbers of pizzas and also determine the expression that describes the cost of having P pizzas delivered. P representing any number, right? So if you're going to have one pizza delivered, we're looking right here, you know it's going to cost you $4. And you're going to have to pay, so we're adding, when we say and, we're adding $2 for delivery. So $4 for the pizza, $2 for delivery is going to give us a cost of $6. If you have two pizzas delivered, then you're going to have $4 each, right? So two times the $4 for the number of pizzas is going to give us $8, plus you still have to pay the $2 delivery. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus $2 delivery would give us $10. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. 3, if we have 3 times the $4, right, because $4 each, you're going to pay $12, plus $2 delivery, you're going to end up paying $14. So looking at these patterns, hopefully what you're starting to see is, well, it's the cost, it's however many pizzas you get, that times four, so four times P for pizzas, plus that $2 delivery charge. So we know our expression is 4P plus two. However many pizzas you get, it's $4 per pizza, four times uh, the number of pizzas, and then add your $2 at the end for your delivery charge. If we have 4, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2, that's going to cost you $18 to have 4 pizzas delivered. 10 times 4 is 40, plus 2 is going to give us 42. 50 times 4 is going to be 200, plus $2 delivery charge is going to give you $202. So, answer a couple of questions. What mathematical operations did you need to perform to find the total cost? Well, if you go back and look, 4p is multiplication, plus 2 is addition, so we used multiplication and addition. We used both operations to solve. Suppose our principal wanted to buy a pizza for everyone in our class. Determine how much this would cost. I'm doing this, I'm making this video in the summer, by the way. So let's just say there's 25 kids in class. If we're going to use our formula, 4P plus 2, 4P plus 2, we'd have 4 times P would be 25 in this case. 4 times 25 is 100, plus 2 for delivery, cost $102 to deliver. All right. If the booster club has $400 to spend on pizza, let's just say that's kind of like the PTA or it's kind of like uh, student council. Booster club has $400 to spend on pizza. What is the greatest number of pizzas they could order? Okay, well, first thing I'm going to look at it, I, so I know it's going to be, again, we're using that 4P plus 2. 
So I'm going to think, could we order 100 pizzas? 4 times 100 plus $2 delivery. 4 times 100 is 400 plus 2 would give us $402. They only have 400 to spend, so 100 pizzas, that's too high. I might go 99. Okay, I'll say, well, 99 times 4 plus the $2 delivery charge. If I go 99 times 4, here's how I'm going to think about it. I know 4 times 100 is 400. 99 is one less set of 4, so 400 minus 4 would be 396. You could write it out and you could do 99 times 4 and do the math. That's fine, but you're going to get 300, 396 either way. Plus 2 would give us 398, and that is our final answer. So they could order 99 pizzas. Now, what you may be noticing, you may, you may be thinking to yourself, well, hold on a minute. If they order 99 pizzas, they're still going to have $2 left over because that only costs $398. But they don't sell a half a pizza. You can't call Pizza Hut up and say, hey, I'd like a half a pizza, right? So they have 400 to spend, but they can only get 99 pizzas because you can't get like half a pizza, right? So 100 is too high. 99 is a little bit too low if you wanted to use the exact amount, but you don't have to use the exact amount. So yeah, it would have to be 99 pizzas. Okay, we'll continue to look at some of these examples in, together in class and discuss more, um, more of these kind of problems. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.